Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobNotPhoto.com and today we're going to be having a quick review and a quick look at the Benro C190, sorry, C1970F carbon fibre tripod sent to me kindly by the people at Kenro. Well, here we go. Um, I probably don't talk about tripods too much on the podcast and in the videos. Um, I guess a lot of the time the tripods are behind the scenes, like now when... Uh, it's supporting my little uh, Canon video camera for, uh, to take this video. Um, but if you don't use tripods already, um, the reason probably is that the ones you've had experience of have been heavy, um, clunky, probably didn't suit your style, and it was easier just to to leave them at, leave them at home. But a tripod can add so much to your photography. In practical terms, um, when you're doing things like uh, portraits or macro photography, or anything where you need to show such a slow shutter speed, a tripod is pretty much, you know, you, there, there we go, you've got to have a, a tripod. So you give your camera a nice stable base, so that over those um, longer exposures that you might get with a macro um, or a portrait, the camera is not going to bring any blur into the photograph. Um, and that could be really, really important. Um, I tend to use a, a tripod an awful lot when I'm doing macro photography of flowers, for example, or um, portrait shots again, you know, where you just set the camera up on the tripod, you know your field of view, and you can shoot away. However, I've probably been guilty more than most for not taking a tripod out in the field. The only time I really take a tripod is if I know I'm using long exposures for landscape photography. For example, if I'm at night doing long exposures and stuff like that. I do have a rather old Velbon aluminium tripod, which although it's stable um, and reliable, uh, it's pretty it's, it's, it's pretty heavy. And that kind of puts me off lugging it around, you know, because when you've got a... DSLR on your shoulder and some lenses or a film SLR or any film camera you know the fact that you've got another a tripod on can really can really put you off but this is where tripods such as the C1970F the Benro um, really come into their own because they are very very nice indeed so what have we got here now the first thing you might say is well wait a minute where's the head well I thought for this review I would deliberately not bother putting a head on the tripod. Obviously, if, if, you, if you're new to tripods, the head is the thing that, that controls the movement of your camera, and you, you get sort of pan and tilt ones, and then you get bowl heads, and you get trigger grips. There's all sorts of different flavours of, uh, of heads, and they can be, they're very subjective. Um, but when you're buying a tripod of this quality and at this price point, you want to buy the head that suits you. So if you want, if you like ball heads, go for a ball head. If you like pan and tilt, maybe if you're doing video and things like that, then get one of those. If you want quick adjustments, maybe something with a with a trigger handle. So for the purposes of this review, we're just going to be looking at the sticks, if you like, um, and then you put your own head on um, to suit. So. The Benro um, C1970F, it costs around about £200, including VAT in the UK. Um, it's about, when you fold it all up, he said, let's have a look, show you how small it goes. It folds up to about 600 millimetres. And actually, when it's folded up, it you some of the other features as well. As I say, the main structure of all the legs and the centre column is, is carbon fibre. Um, and then we've got magnesium fittings on as well. So not only is it very, very light, it's also very, very strong and very, very stiff as well. So that's how big it kind of folds up to, nice and small. But for your money, you also get a rather nice carrying bag to pop it into to keep it clean tidy and safe when it's in the back of your vehicle there's a nice strap as well so you can throw the bag over your shoulder or you can connect that to the tripod itself inside the bag which I really like as well you get a rather nutty little 
they're not a spare set, of, they're, they're alternative feet for it. So these are feet with spikes on, um, which can be really good when you're outside in softer materials, so you can really dig them in. Actually it comes with uh, if you're rubberized feet, which is better for inside. And also I think in there there's a little allen key for tightening things up should you um, want to. And there's your little warranty card as well. So a very nice bag, a very nice strap. Great that it comes with a choice of feet as well for those more difficult sort of situations. Um, incredibly light. And if we have a quick look at it, when it's in this sort of position, imagine the legs are all the way down. What you can also do is if you flick um, these bits here, he says, if I remember how to do it, yeah, if you pop them out, what you can then do is these legs then come past what a tripod would normally do. Oop, if I flick that one out as well. This enables you then to get the tripod very, very low down. Let's loosen that off. Uh, that one. So as you can see, we can now get the tripod very, very, very close to the ground, um, which is uh, which is very good for so, well landscapes. You know, when you've got your ultra wide angle lens on, and you want to get those rocks in the foreground all the way to the distance, or maybe you're doing well anything where you want a more unusual angle. That sort of situation is very, very good. Now, what you've probably also spotted when well, I've been doing this is there's a really handy little spirit level on there as well, which you get on most tripods, but it's a nice effects. Let me just pop these back into place. Um, you can see there we've got a little hook. So these <laughs> are really good these because when you're again when you're out and about but even when you're in the studio actually and you you know there's always a chance your tripod's going to get kicked. What you do is you can hang your camera bag off that and that gives the whole tripod a little bit more stability. It's got a little bit more weight. It's got a little bit more inertia so it's less likely to move. Now what's also cool is the fact that we can take the centre column out and we can reverse it. Now notice how quick and easy this is. All the fittings are very, very smooth, uh, buttery is probably the word I would use. They all snap together very well. So now what we could do is, you know, we, when we sp splayed the legs apart, we could get the camera very, very low. Well, imagine now, you know, when the camera, you could actually hang your camera upside down like this and you could get it right next to the ground for some really unusual shots um, especially with modern DSLRs that have pop-out or compact system cameras that have pop-out screens that you can change the angle of you know that the old problem of having to look through the viewfinder um, has uh, has really really gone and then when you want to go back to shooting normally just pop that out there pop it back into the top Then the legs. Oh, very, very nice indeed. Very, very smooth. And I can't really stress the, you know, the fact that this thing, um, I think it weighs about 1.4 kilograms, he said, consulting his notes. I mean, if you've ever been out for really long photo walks or hikes, you'll know that especially when the weather starts getting cold or getting a little bit wet any ounce of extra weight that you've got in your body reduces the amount of time you can be out there shooting it makes you think about going home it makes you think about going back to the car it makes you think about the fact that you don't really want to be out and about you know waiting for that magical moment when the clouds clear when the rainbow comes over and and you really um get that extra special shot um as for maximum height, I think it goes, it's about 1.5 metres probably there, and then we can take the centre column up to there. So if you can imagine if a, I mean, what am I, I'm about 5'10", so if I had my head on top of there, you know, I wouldn't want a tripod any taller than this because it means that I can look through the viewfinder nice and comfortably. So if I was doing portrait work, for example, that really is, uh, it really is the perfect height, but it's still incredibly stiff is the word I would use. Um, as we said before, you can adjust the angles to any uh, particular angle you want. You know, they're all independent of each other. We can change the feet for, for different situations. And I mean, I've used this tripod with an old pan and tilt head from my old Velbon tripod. And I've been, well, it, it's just a, it, it's a pleasure to use it. You know, you can move it around very easily. Uh, it's easy to adjust the height. 
it's nice and smooth but when you do tighten up all the knobs and locks it's very very stiff um, I've been out and about um, in the garden and down at the front sort of taking photographs with it that way as well and you know when you've got it in its bag when it's over your shoulder you don't even really notice you know don't even don't know you don't even notice it's there and that's where when you're out and about and um, when you're setting up shots that the artistic side of a tripod if there could be one really comes into its own so what we're talking about here is the fact that having and using a tripod when you're doing landscapes or cityscapes or anything really where you're you're going out shooting things that catch your eye what the tripod does is it makes you slow down a little bit it makes you think about your composition that little bit more because you've got to set the tripod up and put the camera in it makes you think about you know do i want portrait do i want landscape what focal length do i want to use everything becomes that little bit more considered now i'm not saying that shooting off the cuff and and, and fast isn't a bad thing it's a bad thing sorry it's just that sometimes having a tripod where it just slows you down introduces that extra element that might have been missing from your photography before where you just were going around click 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 and shooting all the time uh, that way also it's always a great conversation piece actually when you set up a trip and put your camera on it lots of people come up and say oh what are you doing what are you taking a picture of all that sort of thing as well so there we go as you can probably tell by my enthusiasm I've been uh, pretty impressed with this tripod um, you know I know carbon fiber has been around a long time and you could say that 200 pounds is an awful lot of money to spend on a, on a on a set of sticks but actually when you do a bit of research it's not and this model the C1970F from Benro um, with the carbon fiber uh, legs and, and center column and the uh, magnesium fittings is really really nice really really good so if you're in the market for looking at something like this then I'd pro probably say you couldn't really go wrong there are lighter ones out there um, and there are very much more expensive ones out there but I think this one's probably got a great combination of lightness strength um, and uh, and ease of use a little bit more technical stuff um, its maximum load um, is about is eight kilograms as well so that's quite a lot you could put a camera with a big lens on it that way um, and there we go so there we go the Spenro C1970F carbon fiber tripod it's really impressed me and I think if you're looking for a lightweight um, reliable um, tough and uh, above all stable tripod you probably couldn't go far wrong my name's Rob from robnonfoto.com and thanks for watching